Welcome to John McGivern's Main Streets, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of this popular TV program. I love it. <laughs> You'll hear from John, Main Streets producer and director Lois Maurer, and that episode's content producer, as they share some of their favorite memories from filming and interesting stories that you won't find anywhere else. Today's episode, Amana Colonies, Iowa. We're talking about our fifth episode of season two. It's the Amana Colonies. So I'm sitting with uh, Emily Annunziata, who is the producer, the content producer on this episode. And of course, Lois Maurer, the executive producer and director. And um, Emily, were you assigned this city, this this episode? Um, uh, How did it work out? I think it was just like a process of elimination. We went through all the episodes. You know, other content producers had cities that they wanted to do. And I said, you know what? I'll just take it on, you know, take on whatever cities are, are left, Amana colonies, very intriguing to me. You know, it's not one community, it was seven. Right. The history I knew nothing about. So I kind of wanted to dive right in. We put it on the list because it was recommended to me by a friend who happens to be a motorcycle rider. She and her husband ride. And um, Anne Marie yeah. said to me, have you ever been to the Amana colonies in Iowa? And of course not. And she said, it's very touristy, but it's really got a ton of history. And so that's how it got on our list to begin with. But I, like every other person who doesn't live there, thought it was an Amish community. Right. I did too, until diving into the Wikipedia page first. And you're like, wow, okay, this is a, another another level of amazing deep history that, yeah. that, you know, that community is still rooted in. So that was fun to research all of that. And when we have eight interviews that you've got to come to terms with and you have seven colonies like did you did you approach it thinking that maybe we had to do one in each or how how was what was the approach at first that was a little overwhelming you know seven communities i have to pick things from seven communities but for the amana colonies everything was pretty much centered in that one amana um, town. So, but all of the Amanas are so close, right? They told us they're a one-hour ox ride away, which now in our vehicles is about mm, three minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and right. one thing we knew about the Amana colonies was the name Amana on every uh, refrigerator. Appliance. Or, yeah. Exactly. So we knew it had a history somehow, and now that's Whirlpool. And we love to identify in every community some good manufacturing because John loves his manufacturing. Well, they're good, and you couldn't have a better one. Oh, I know. And the fact that it was in the Amana colonies, wasn't mm-hmm. that almost like, it was what yeah. is not like the rest of it. I found most fascinating that the amount of employees they have there is larger than the population of all seven Amana colonies. So that could really be its eighth Amana colony there, just Whirlpool, Amana. (laughs) And the other amazing thing to me was when we thought of this communal colony, because that's really how the Amana colony started. They were communal, communal living, right? That's what they said. There was a kitchen in every village. Not every house had a kitchen. It sounds very old timey. You know what I mean? And then when you hear that the radar range, which we know as a microwave, was invented there and all the innovation there, to me, it was just a disconnect in my brain having never been there before. So to be able to go discover it and Whirlpool is ultra modern, ultra high tech, and rooted in that history. Not only did every house not have a kitchen, every house did not have a kitchen. I mean, they True. didn't have a You're kitchen. You're right, right, I said that wrong. You're right. It was, it was the community that came together. So you had these communal kitchens where 40 people got together for, for lunch, I mean, for breakfast, snack, Lunch, snack, dinner, snack. I mean, they... they, they <laughs> but only the field workers got the snacks. <laughs> they came together three, four, and five... And no talking. And no talking. no talking. You have to get right back to work. Yeah. We could not live there, John. No, no talking? <laughs> well, uh, there are moments when it would be heaven. Oh, sh- <laughs> They put you guys as tour guides. <laughs> right. But the fact that that was, that was really the history of that community. And we found out it's all about productivity. So keeping the the communes and the the Mm -hmm. colonies productive and making sure they're working and making sure that, you know, the task at hand. Well, and focused on God, right? Their whole thing was, if you are completely focused on God, then you're not focused on the relationships of this world. Right. And we were like, well, there's a recipe for extinction. (laughs) (laughs) 
And their focus on God took the form of, just so you know, I'm, I'm, I was raised Catholic, so we'd go to church um, on Sundays and we'd sit in this grand <laughs> palace to God. This their church, first of all, it's not a church, it's a meeting place. Mm -hmm. It's a com community meeting place. You wouldn't know you were in any sort of, like this This wasn't a, right. a place of worship. No stained glass and not a cross to be found. This is a Christian religion, not a cross to be found. Right. No symbols. No kneelers. Which you thought was heaven until. Until they told you what you did, which was you, <laughs> you faced the pew and knelt down on the wood floor. I would have been like, oh, Lent would have been awful here. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was really interesting. It was and the fact that the, the churches are still attended and that the religion goes on and it's the only place in the world where the Amana religion is mm -hmm. that where and it exists. That they've, you know, turned that into such a tourism business and um, they've really made it a well-oiled machine yeah. of tourism, historical tourism. I think I was reading an article about that. That's one of the destinations for people who like that yeah. sort of stuff. Being very open about it and, yeah. and welcoming people into their, you know, old communal kitchens and yeah. what have you. You can really find out about everything. It's visiting. a proud history and they put it on display very well and they're still very true to their religion and to their, their it does, they don't live in communes anymore because the great change happened in, tell me, Emily, 19... 1932. 32. Okay. 1932 was the great change, which means that they stopped living as um, a commune. Everybody then got their own kitchens, right? And, and um, so that kind of... But, they bought a whirlpool. <laughs> they got a whirlpool in every kitchen. And the... Um, the society is still there, though, and owns a number of things in town as they used to, right? They own right. a farm. They right. own, what else do they own? The now? hotel. Uh, the oh, the hotel. Yeah, the yeah. Amanda Society, the farm, the hotel, some, is it some, one of the wineries or breweries? Um, uh-huh, furniture shop, meat furniture shop. Furniture shop. The farm is what produces electricity, which they are in charge of that as well. Is that Correct. right? Right, right. And, and their way of producing electricity was very... Smelly. <laughs> smelly. Smelly. I was going to say interesting, but all right. Interesting. <laughs> yes, there were smelly. aspects of the uh, parts of that farm that I couldn't even step near. I, I, I felt and that bad rarely because the day we were there, it was literally 104, too. Do you remember? And it was windy. So it was a hot, stinky breeze, which and is even worse than. <laughs> Um, stagnant. <laughs> Emily, I thought you were going down. I kept looking at you thinking, oh, I'm a loser. I'm a loser. <laughs> but you know, what a way to make electricity when you think about it. That digester that they have is not technology that they developed, but it's technology that works. It'll power the entire communities except for Whirlpool, right? That mm -hmm. plant has their own um, energy generation, but the rest of the colonies are powered by the cow digester plant. The Amana Farms. Yes. At, at least does it. It's really cool. So that's one of the things that surprised me most was how progressive, yeah. Yeah. you know, with the energy and efficiency and sustainability. Yeah. So that was very that They was think very about it. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. And they, yeah, they have been thinking about it, you know, probably uh, longer than a lot of other people have. So yeah. Yeah. that was cool. Want to wear something that's going to support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. You know, I've got to talk about insurance. Are you stressed and overwhelmed with your Medicare Advantage plan options? It's ironic, really. The thing you need the most causes you stress. And it doesn't have to be that way. I chose Network Health because it's not stressful. For 40 years, they've provided health insurance to Medicare members throughout Wisconsin. And their customer service, oh, let me tell you something, it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. So if you're looking for a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to be relieved of stress, you got to call my friends at Network Health. Call 844-277-7174 today. That's 844-277-7174. Don't wait. Favorites? Well, first of all, we spend time away every week. We spend away from our homes. And mm -hmm. I am always the one who's usually crabbing about where we're staying. Oh, I yeah. had no crab that week. How I mean, beautiful. we stayed in a place, the Hotel Millwright, and it was part of an old 
mill. Woolen mill. Yeah. Woolen mill, mill. Yeah. that they turned into this really glorious hotel. It's beautiful. Surprising. And a great, we, we had lunch there a couple times. They had a, a great selection and it was a, it was, it was really one of my favorite places where we stayed. And who would have thought that in the Amana colonies, I'd be like, what a great hotel. Yeah, but I told you when we went for the site survey, I walked into that hotel and I got to stay there during the site survey. And I knew you were going to be very happy with me that <laughs> week. <laughs> There'll be no crabbing. Very beautiful hotel. And yeah. well run, like, you know, very top notch too. Mm -hmm. I thought the people there were so open and so kind. Like we, there wasn't a crabby face all week hmm. and everybody, oh, except yours. <laughs> Oh, with what are you looking at? <laughs> exactly. Okay. We didn't meet any crabby faces. <laughs> they were all really super nice. But one of the people that I loved the most, this is one of my favorites, was the Sean's furniture family, especially oh. the dad who happened to be there when we were there. And they, when you talk about craftsmanship and artisans, these people are artists yeah. and not just, you know, makers of furniture or, but boy, talk about from the ground up. And his wife, um, the who, what was the gentleman's name who owned it? Uh, Mike. Mike's wife was caning chairs when they were there and, or ruching and doing, I mean, we're talking about stuff they did 300 years ago that they were standing there doing while we were there. Well, and when you say we went to a furniture store, it's not what you think. No, I mean, this is a It's carpenter? all stuff that they make. Yeah, it's like just... Like, in the back. Yeah, right. So it's like, well, this is, this is a hand-made furniture store. So the size, it, yeah. w it wasn't sizable. It was, you know, right. and everything... And to, to get into the back and talk to the, you know, the, the owner's father who... Norman. Norman. Oh, what a charmer. <laughs> you are the what generation that, that's fifth, been in this business? Fifth generation. He's the sixth? Mm -hmm. Remember him sitting in a little chair right about over here when he was working? Yeah. And uh, he was just a little tight. And he's your boss now, yes? Mm hmm Exactly. So this is spotted maple from our local timber. And we call it a man of marble wood. It's just a phrase, you know, we always have to put a man on everything. Because Don't you? It, it's like your middle name. <laughs> Yeah. It's fantastic. So it's generations of guys who have done yeah. this. And yeah. then it's still it's still a business. Another theme, family, businesses, trades, the meat shop. Um, that's something that has been in yeah. the Amana lifestyle since the beginning of, yep. you know, making meats and then making wines. So all that continues today. And they, you know, they keep it flourishing for the tourists that they see. So. Right. Mm -hmm. How about the food? What did you think of the food in the Amana colonies? The Oxyoke Inn. Wasn't he a good guy? That oh. was phenomenal. <laughs> Another family that's been there for, you know. Right. Like part of the original Amana, what do you call them, settlers, I guess, you know, who originally came from New York. And and yeah. that was a communal kitchen. Yeah, the, the actual building the mm -hmm. Axioak was in, or is in, yeah. Oh, it was? Yeah, it was one of the original communal kitchens. Huh. And uh -huh. he's expanded it like 15 times or something. Sure. Because it's yeah. it's... It's sizable what he has there. And the in the basement, what do they call it? The Rothskeller? Yeah. Is that what it was called? I think so. All I know is that it was really cool. It felt so German. German. Didn't it? German. The yeah. food. German, German. Food was family style, like yeah. what they would have gotten, you know, back in the communal kitchen days. Um, just so platters original. of food coming out. Right. Original recipes is very good. Yeah, he was a good guy. Bill was his name. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have been any more welcoming. And fed us until we couldn't. <laughs> That's right. Which is quite the feat for us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The other thing that I, of course, did never wanted to leave was the woolen mill. Was that the coolest thing? And I am slow, a little slow in this way. I didn't realize that the logo for the Millwright Hotel is the pattern that is made when all of the strings come together to go to the loom. Mm. Wasn't that awesome to yeah. see? And to yeah. see those large looms, I don't know the correct terms for it, but to see them in action, I didn't realize how large everything was yeah. to, you know, create all the There's blankets. There's like 500 and, spools of thread and, going down the side and they change this one and it turns into a different pattern. And, it was and the amazing. people who set it up. So I talked to the woman who has to set up every piece of thread that goes in to make whatever blanket they were doing, whatever they were making. And th there must have been 40 different threads that went into it. And to look at the puzzle that yeah. 
comes together to make it. And she was so kind of like, well, I've done it for a while. It's not that big a deal. You yeah. know, it's like, wow, yeah. it's, it's, it, it looks like a big deal to me. And when was the first time that the doors opened to this woolen mill? 1857. And has it been operating since? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what they made back then, is it much different now? You know, not really. The yeah. process is very much the same. Yeah. We still have to warp and weave. And warp means what? Warp is the lengthwise threads on the blanket. The width is the weave. Oh, it is. Warped and woven. Thank you. I love that. Right. It was, and the it blankets was cool. themselves are so lovely. All different oh, colors mm. and all right, they're beautiful. And the shop, the gift shop that you could go in and purchase what they make on property was cool. Oh yeah, I could have spent all day in there. Yeah, I thought it was a really good episode. I thought I thought it's going to be so different than the yes, rest of the that's what out I of like. the thirteen episodes that we that we're doing yes. this season. It'll be so different than the rest of them. It's really indicative of what we try to do on this show. Where you go, the character of what we experience needs to come through in the episode, and this one's going to feel different because the Amana colonies are different. They're slower and beautiful, and like you said, the rolling hills and the sensibility of the people, and I think this is going to be that episode that people remember this season as a surprise. I had no idea about the Amana colonies. And will you guys go back? Oh, I would go back in I'll a minute. I'll go back, yeah. Good. Yeah, it's, it's episode five. It's the Amana Colonies in Iowa. It's one of our two Iowa episodes in season two. And Emily, great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. You yeah, guys did a great job. Lois, good, you, good Lois, job. Lois, you did fine. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Curious to find out where John is traveling next? Head over to our website, MainStreets.tv, to learn more. Again, that's MainStreets.tv. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and please leave us a review. It helps more people discover great programming like Main Streets. Look for us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to follow all the action. John McGivern's Main Streets is produced by Plum Media in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm.